In late July of 2015, my wife and I flew to Iceland for a vacation, which was actually more of an adventure. So basically, we had to go to Boston, drove to Boston from Connecticut, and then took a five-hour flight on Iceland Air to the only international airport in Iceland, which is in Kevlavik. So from Kevlavik Airport, we then had to get to the capital of Iceland, where we were staying, which is Reykjavik. So when you land in Kevlavik, this is among the first things you see as you walk down the corridor, a nice welcoming sign. And then as you leave the airport, you see some very interesting uh, structures. Um, these, of course, have been commissioned by sculptors, and one is called Rainbow, the other is called the Jet Nest. So basically, that Jet Nest is supposed to be the wing of an airplane that is um, hatching from this egg. Why it's curved, I'm not sure, other than perhaps to mimic the bill of a bird. Okay, so here we have the route from Kevlovic, which is over here, the airport, and got to make our way along this route all the way up to Reykjavik. So very convenient, they have a fly bus. And if you take uh, the fly bus plus, costs a little bit more, but it's well worth it. They'll actually take you right to your hotel. So we decided to do the fly bus plus so we wouldn't have to be dragging our luggage um, across Reykjavik from the uh, drop-off point to get to our hotel. So we were taken right to our hotel. So here we are inside the bus and the route along the way. The very first thing I thought of um, as we headed out is that I felt like I was on the moon. Everything kind of looks like what you see here. Iceland is basically lava. It is a volcanic island. Everything that's built on Iceland, which is not a lot, um, is actually being built on surfaces of lava. The beaches are black. Everything is kind of blackish with a relatively little vegetation. There's a small vegetation and whatever trees there are, are actually planted and they, they do take. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's good that that happens, but uh, there are no large trees that naturally occur in Iceland. So now we're getting close to Reykjavik in our bus and we are staying at the Hotel Holt which is a really really nice place. Took me a long time to research this. We had a junior suite with a balcony. It looked just like that and um, you can see the uh, long balcony extends over in this area here with two doors that lead out to it. The main bedroom area is here. There's a bathroom you can't see that's behind this wall. And there's a, a sofa that's also a hide-a-bed over there with two desks, which was nice. And of course the hotel bar, which we never use because the prices at all hotel room bars are incredibly high. Interestingly, there's four, so there's four floors to this hotel. And as soon as you get out of the elevator on any of the floors, you see these very large engravings attached to the walls. They're really, really interesting. And in fact, there's a lot of artwork throughout Hotel Holt. So these correspond to the various floors in the hotel. And this is the room from our, uh, uh, the, this is the view rather from our balcony. So here we are in Reykjavik. I'm shooting this video from our hotel balcony, which is the fourth floor, the top floor. Kind of hard to see. It's a little bit misty out there in the background, but you can see some of the mountains. There is the, uh, there's the balcony looking down at the street, that red house dates to around 1898 a little bit old from what i've seen here most of them are the uh, the older buildings are the early 1900s and um, you walk down that street and it takes you right to that waterway and zoom in on that a little bit that waterway there it's actually a huge pond and uh, the opposite side of that is the city hall which i got some photos of earlier So in the summertime, uh, it never gets totally dark. Uh, the sun sets around 11.30 at night, 
in uh, June and July, thereabouts. But it never really gets totally dark. This is 10.30 at night. It got a little darker than this. I remember waking up at 2.30 in the morning and there was still enough light outside uh, such that one could easily go out without any street lights or anything like that and find your way around. Not that I did that. And so here's a panoramic shot that I made. Uh, all of these um, um, still photos as well as the videos are made with my iPhone 6 Plus. This is the um, complimentary breakfast uh, table. And there were, in fact, there were several tables. There was one that had juice, one that had coffee and stuff like that. And so this is where most of the food was located. You're not even seeing everything in this photo because there were loaves of bread as well. So it was a pretty decent array of things to choose from. And then we walk right over into this room where uh, we have breakfast. And that's the remains of my breakfast. <laughs> so um, let's look around uh, Reykjavik. So not too far from our hotel, there's a whole bunch of embassies. Well, not a whole bunch. There are three at least that I found. Maybe there's more, but I only found three. Starting with the American embassy. And here's the German embassy in the foreground. And if you look way in back, you'll see the uh, British flag. So the British embassy is over in that area. And opposite the German embassy is this um, statue of a bear, which is a very common symbol in Germany. And I found this structure. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, I didn't really explore that further, but it was a different type of architecture from what we typically saw in Reykjavik. Lots of statues around the city, lots of them. Well, this is that huge pond. It's, I'm not even sure I can pronounce this. I'll, I'll just try. Um, Tjornan Pond or whatever. And it's, um, it's quite large. There's two sections of it. Uh, there's a walkway over it. And a lot, lots of uh, ducks in this area. So you can basically walk around that, which we did. And there's more statues once you make your way around. Uh, this is probably the largest one we saw. And there's the same thing from a different angle. And I found this guy sitting on a park bench beside the waterway. Tried to uh, have a conversation with him, but you know, he just wasn't all that responsive. And there's the city hall at the far end of the pond as we look toward the downtown area of Reykjavik, the actual city hall being this building right here. It's a very modern structure. So we walked inside there, and one of the rooms has this huge relief map of Iceland. It's incredibly well done. It's not well labeled, unfortunately, but uh, here I lowered my camera um, close to the bottom of the map just to get a better sense of the landscape aspect of this relief map. And then not too far outside the hotel is this very old church. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. And uh, also close to City Hall is this thing, which is called a Memorial to the Unknown Bureaucrat. And this is another very old church near City Hall. We were there around 9 in the morning, as you can see from the clock, recording the church bells. And uh, nearby, uh, this is all pretty much clustered together. Here's the parliament. And if you just turn around from um, facing that building in the opposite direction, there is this little park where in the middle of the day, a lot of people gather. And of course, the, uh, the necessary statue in the middle of the park. This one is an Icelandic national hero. I don't know anything about him. And uh, this is a hill. It's hard to get the sense that... Um, uh, you're on a, uh, a hill, but I guess you can see a little bit that there's a, this walkway up to the top of this hill called, uh, I guess, Arnar Hole or something like that. And, of course, a statue at the top of the hill. 
<laughs> and then, then if you go down the hill and you head in an opposite direction, there is this shopping district, and this street is just loaded with all kinds of shops, mostly tourist-oriented, but not entirely. There's a lot of restaurants. I saw some record stores and things like that. They're really into trolls. You see a lot of trolls around, around Iceland. These guys are pretty huge, actually, outside this store. And some interesting wood carvings outside of some other stores. And then as you walk up this block, you come upon this very famous cathedral. It's the tallest structure in Reykjavik. We'll get closer to it right there. You can actually take an elevator to the top, but we did not do that. And there's a statue, of course, by the church. This is uh, Leif Erikson the son of Iceland, discoverer of Finland, Finland, Finland. And um, this is a rather large statue out, outside of that church. And then, you know, strolling along some of the side streets off that uh, main road where all the shops are, I found this Obla di Obla da shop. So anything Beatles oriented, I of course have to take a photo of. Now there's this really interesting concert hall. It's called Harpa. And here is what it looks like from a distance, very modern structure. The thing is, as you move around this, um, the sun reflects off of all of these windows in such a way. It's almost like a honeycomb, but maybe not quite. And um, it actually changes color as you walk around it. So I went inside and I'm shooting outside through one of those honeycomb type things. Um, at the main street along the, um, the shore walk. I'll, I'll get to the shore walk in just a moment. And again, more shots from inside, a really interesting structure. And you just go up level by level. There's another video. And uh, here you can see there's this long walkway. So. Uh, I ended up, this is the very top floor actually, so I walked over there and I ended up going down these stairs. It's kind of cool, there's these little pieces of furniture where you can sit, there's some people sitting, so I, I sat down and looked at some of the photos that I had taken. And then uh, this is actually still taken from the inside looking out at that one wing that jets outward. And uh, now the shore walk, which is um, just outside of Harpa. So here's Harpa right here the concert hall, and the shore walk is this area right along this rather busy highway, right along here. It's called the shore walk. And so I took a number of photos. That one is a, um, a panorama. There's the concert hall on the left, and then panning across. It's a very pleasant place to walk. There's a... Um, a, a, a lane that's designated for pedestrians to walk or people to jog. And then next to that, there's a little, a little bit of a physical divider, is a lane that is um, specifically for bike riders. And bicycling is very, very popular in Reykjavik, Reykjavik, in fact, throughout Iceland. But again, you get a sense of the fact that, yes, we're on a volcanic island. This is all lava. Everything you see is lava. By the way, that mountain in the background, we were told, is a very popular hiking area. So people typically would go up on this sort of a gradual incline. Um, I was told that even little kids can manage that, so it's not very strenuous. And then, um, you know, I guess there's different paths along the way. Unfortunately, we did not have time to do that. I would very much have liked to have done that. But again, the shore walk. Now we're walking in the opposite direction uh, from the far end, and here's the uh, Harpa Concert Hall, now over at that end. As you walk along the shore walk, you see this um, Viking boat type structure. It's made of metal, and it's called Solfar. For some reason, at least at the time that I was there, this was the number four attraction in Reykjavik, and I can't figure out why. <laughs> it's um, There's not much to it other than what you see here. People climb on it and get their picture taken, and I just don't get it, but whatever. The first night there, we ate at this restaurant called Tapas Baron. And this is something that was recommended to me by a colleague 
and it was a great recommendation. So it's a little bit hard to find, but we found it. And you go in, it's kind of underground, sort of, halfway underground. There's the bar and the uh, restaurant area. And so here's the menu, and uh, you can see they have some rather interesting dishes. For example, uh, we had Serrano ham with Manchego cheese. Um, these are all small plates, so we had a lot of different things. Not a lot. Uh, also had the rack of lamb, which was really, really good. And I actually wanted to try this uh, smoked puffin with blueberry sauce. Uh, puffin is a bird. It's a northern Atlantic bird. Uh, I think in the United States you won't find them further south than Maine. And, um, you know, I never thought I'd want to eat something like that. And you'll see why when I show you a photo of it in a moment. And uh, we had a couple other things as well off this menu. My wife had the sangria and I had a couple of IPAs. I'm really into IPAs. This is one that's uh, from Iceland. And <laughs> there's the smoked puffin right there. Doesn't look all that appetizing. Uh, first, I tried some without the blueberry sauce. Um, it didn't taste all that strong, really. Uh, I, I can't relate it to any other thing that I've ever eaten. The blueberry sauce did improve it a lot. And um, Atlantic char is uh, salmon. My wife had that. She also had lobster tails. And I had filet of lamb and plum sauce on a skewer, which again was really, really good. And they took our picture. <laughs> and then when I told them that we were there for our wedding anniversary, they brought us a complimentary dessert. In fact, it was a bunch of desserts all on one plate. So that was very nice of them. Okay, the next morning, we did a private tour with Discover Iceland on a 4x4 Super Jeep. And we took a tour of the Golden Circle, which is pretty much the, the number one tour that anyone going to Iceland takes, whether you're on a big tour bus with a whole bunch of other people or on a Jeep with a smaller number of people, or in our case, a private tour. And that's just from their websites showing some of the things that we saw. This was about a nine hour trip. And this is our tour guide, a really cool guy. Uh, who asked to be called uh, Gumi or Gummy. I forgot now which, which is the pronunciation. I think it was Gummy. Oh, yeah, I think it was Gummy because he, he made the joke, Gummy Bear. So it is Gummy. And that is his fun mobile. The, um, the outfit that he works for, Discover Iceland, has about four or so of these Jeeps. They're made for off-the-road driving. And as you'll see, we certainly did that. And they each have a different license plate with... Um, English words. This one happened to be fun. So our first stop from Reykjavik was at this area called Thingvellir, which I'm totally mispronouncing. But to orient you, this is Reykjavik right here. And so I believe we took this route. I'm not 100% sure, but we ended up right over here. And this is what it looked like. So there's this huge lake. But again, very volcanic, as you can see. Now, the thing about this area, especially seen here, this is where the tectonic plates meet. There's also a lot of these fissures in, the, um, in this area. But basically, right here, is where we have the Mid-Atlantic Ridge that cuts right through Iceland. So here it's underwater, okay? And then it, it just basically is going right through Iceland. And this is where we were right here in this area, which is what you're seeing in this photograph. So it's basically where the North American tectonic plate meets the Eurasian tectonic plate. It's very unique. Iceland, I believe, is the only land mass anywhere on Earth. I could be mistaken about this, but I think it's the only one where two tectonic plates actually come together. And then we went to this waterfall, very close by, off the beaten track. Only the private tour goes there. Some of the locals know about it. Well, a lot of locals know about it. 
but it's not a, a major place for a tour bus to stop. So one of the many benefits of having a private tour. And we got our picture taken. My wife had a big pack under her coat. Um, didn't gain a lot of weight. <laughs> and so, uh, again, this is just looking in the same area into this waterway. Okay, so the next stop is at Geyser. And that's exactly what it is. It's a geyser. <laughs> um, the geyser that's still active that we saw is called Stroker. Geyser was actually, G-E-Y-S-I-R, was actually, is actually an Icelandic name for a geyser. And so uh, it sort of became the generic name for geysers all over the world, just like I guess Kleenex is a more or less generic name for facial tissue. So um, the geyser called geyser is no longer active, but the one that is active is Stroker. And so as we approach this, it gets to be very active, a very active area. As we made our way to the geyser, we actually got geysered upon. <laughs> Stroker erupted unexpectedly, and we were right where all the water fell. I have no videos of that. I was too busy getting drenched. But then we made our way to the other side, and that is Stroker right there. And I got my camera ready because we knew that it was going to do it again. Of course, now we're out of striking range. In other words, we're around the uh, side where the water was not going to go. We were over in this area where these people, there's people all around in here. That's where we got geysered. When you see the water level do that, it starts to go up and down a bit. That's a, a sign that it could very well erupt. Not always but it's not going to erupt unless that happens. You can see there's very little time to react to get, to get out of the way if you happen to be where the water is coming down. So it typically erupts every 8 to 15 minutes. When we got geysered upon, it was much less than 8 minutes since the one before that, which is why it was a bit of a surprise. But hey, it was a fun experience. I've never been geysered before. It is quite high. Same geyser. We were further away at the next eruption. But it shows you um, that it gets pretty high. I got it. Yeah. Just as. What goes around comes around. Yeah. And there's a lot of thermal pools right in this same area. Okay, so we're heading away from Geyser, and now we're heading toward a glacier. So this is along the roadway. Again, everything is very barren, very volcanic. Everything looks pretty much like that. So, okay, Reykjavik is there, and here's the Geyser right here. This is the largest glacier in Iceland. We went to the second largest one, which is this one right over here. And here we are as we approach the glacier. There are iris books here, but of course they're not native. Yeah. And uh, actually there's no evidence to support them. And we're not on it yet. There's still, um, we're still on a lot of volcanic matter. Now remember, this is summer. So there's been some melting, but here we are right at the edge of the glacier. My wife is standing on the glacier, sort of. <laughs> um, we really have a ways to go before we're really on the glacier, per se, but we're heading there. Still have a way. We, have, we went over rocks. We took some crazy routes 
that only a 4x4 Jeep could take. We're on the glacier now. Driving on a glacier, how cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So raise your hand if you were driving on a glacier. <laughs> Never. Well, I am now. <laughs> I am making a short movie of us driving on the glacier. <laughs> now do they take ski trips up here? No, not really, because you can't build the uh, lifts. Yeah. And we just kept going up and up and up. As you can see, there's our vehicle. Now, uh, Gummy uh, several times released air from the tires because he needed better traction. You know, the, the tires obviously flatten out, and he just does this every day when he takes tours, so he knows exactly what he's doing and what air pressure to, uh, to reach. And so he kept deflating and deflating a couple times as we got through um, more rugged terrain. So we had no problem. We never got stuck. We're driving along. This entire area. See? Yep. Going He's up okay. the glacier. <laughs> And so we got out of the Jeep and just got some shots of what it's like to be on a glacier. It's basically like that. And here we are outside the Jeep. Okay, guys, here we are. We are on the top. Well, not on the top. About as far up this glacier as we are really going to be going. And this is a glacier. It's the second largest uh, in Iceland. And... That means that by uh, January of next year, it won't be here anymore <laughs> because you guys are burning too much coal way back in America. So stop it. Yeah, otherwise we won't have glaciers anymore. <laughs> anyway, so yes, it's a really, really scenic area. And you can see how the weather can change so quickly in Iceland. I mean, there's, there's rain in one area, blue sky in another, cloudy in another. The and you really get to see it all yeah. on a glacier. Yeah. I noticed at one there's a huge lake we actually tried to get to wow. drive to the um, another the area of the glacier to get as close to the edge as possible but gummy noticed some cracks in the um, in the ice and he said that it would have been way too risky because we could have ended up um, crumbling down <laughs> into that lake or whatever. So uh, safety first, always. And again, on the glacier. Lots of rocks, again, very volcanic. It's all lava. We actually drove over rock piles like this in the 4x4. Four four. And um, I think now we're heading away from the glacier. Yeah, we can, okay, we're away from the glacier, heading back. The roads there, well, they're not wide. Um, these, again, these are roads that tour buses cannot drive on. These are only for uh, locals and, and four by fours and things like that. Very, very desolate. We, we had stopped so Gumi could put some air back in the tires with his air compressor. And so I just took advantage of getting some photos of these very desolate roadways nothing to see in either direction other than snow lava lots of lava and um and some uh, craters mountains and things like that and there's our roadway and just a close-up of the lava just to show that yes it really is lava you can see from all the pits and then we saw a rainbow as we headed on out again 
And now our next stop on this tour is, there's the glacier, by the way, that's where we were, our glacier, okay? And our next stop is Gulfoss Waterfall. Really awesome. There it is, right there from the air. So the bottom of the waterfall is down here. And then there's a, a little place you can walk, an incline, walk along to the top. And uh, the, the, the lake that actually uh, results in the waterfall is up here. And the waterfall itself is in this area. And there's different levels, as you'll see. So here we are. Um, we're already a little bit high up at this point. And here's the, the walkway that gets you up to higher and higher inclines. Ultimately, we end up up here, as you'll see. But um, as waterfalls go, this was really pretty uh, incredible. Now, obviously, tour buses do stop here. Uh, there's major roadways here, so they can get here. That's where all those people came from. And we're heading on up, further and further up. So that's looking down. We're already pretty high up, but we're still not at the top. So I guess the second level that you're looking at, so I'm probably up at the third level. And then uh, now I'm at the top. Looking down. And the lake area is up there. And uh, more rainbows. We saw a lot of rainbows in, on this particular day because we were in and out of rain, as you can see from all the clouds. Nothing major though. Again, I'm at the top. There's the, the rainbow and looking down. And again, still at the top. A little bit lower, just so I could get that view. There's the rainbow. This was um, a pretty incredible place to stop. Then Gumi took us to Mars. <laughs> he said, do you want to go to Mars? And I'm like, okay, yeah, take us to Mars. Why not? We've been everywhere else. So um, basically, <laughs> this is just um, a place that's being dug out for minerals, I guess, whatever. But... Um, Again, no tour buses here. In order to get to this thing, it was like incredible what he was driving up and especially down. Down is scarier than up. But um, it was very colorful, especially when you look at the uh, mountains in the background or hills. There's, there's gummy. <laughs> And then we went further up to the very top, and I'm just taking some photos of the countryside from the very top of Mars, as it were. And uh, again, you see, there's no trees. Uh, we're out in the middle of nowhere, so no, no trees have been planted out here. So all of that is naturally occurring vegetation. And again, from the, in the same area. Okay, so we got back to Reykjavik, and uh, we had a pretty good lunch on the way uh, at a place that we stopped, actually where the geysers are. And um, we weren't overly hungry. I had no dinner reservations. I didn't think we'd want anything. But uh, Gummy had told us you absolutely have to have an Icelandic hot dog. And I'd heard about Icelandic hot dogs because they're made with lamb, which is kind of unique, and I happen to like lamb. So he said, the place to go is this little roadside stand in Reykjavik. And when we got there, there were actually people, I guess they were mostly locals, that were um, trying to pull in off of this fairly busy roadway and <laughs> try to get off the roadway. And so I took that as a good sign that this was a place that was really, really popular and people wanted to get here to get a hot dog. And um, there's my hot dog. <laughs> I've already eaten a portion of it. 
So yeah, made with lamb. He said to get it with the works. He said, don't just get a plain hot dog or a hot dog with ketchup, get it with the works. So these are the works, <laughs> whatever the works are. I know there's some onions in there. Uh, you can't see them covered with the sauce. I guess there's a cheese thing in there. Anyway, um, I couldn't really detect the lamb taste of the hot dog. I think it was way overpowered by quote unquote, the works. So, you know, if I ever get back to Reykjavik, I'm going to have to get another one and just have the plain hot dog to see what it really tastes like on its own. But um, it was very good. Certainly the cheapest meal we had while we were in Iceland. The next morning, we took a helicopter tour with the main helicopter touring company, Norderflug. We did their Countless Craters tour. They do a lot of tours. We did the Countless Craters. So we basically uh, had to walk from our hotel, which is right around, right over there, and we uh, walked down some side streets, and we had to get to the Reykjavik airport. It's not an international airport, so Iceland Air does not fly there from any international site. Uh, they have some local flights. There's two other airlines that go out of there. Some go from here to Greenland, and others go to other um, smaller airports throughout Iceland. So it's a re relatively small airport, but that's where uh, Norderflug is located. So here we're walking toward Norderflug. The airport's sort of behind us there when I took that shot. And there's Norderflug, a very small building. That's their headquarters. And this is their own video, which I want to show because I think they had a, ma a camera mounted on the outside of the helicopter. In fact, I'm pretty sure they did uh, to make this video. You'll see the videos that I made, but I wanted to show this because it's pretty spectacular. You'll find this online if you want to go looking for it. Thank you. 
So as my wife keeps reminding me, you have not seen Iceland until you've seen it from a helicopter. And I do agree with that. So uh, basically the route that we took, uh, this is the route they have mapped out, out on their site. I believe that, um, in fact, I'm pretty sure we went out this way along that blue line. And along the way, we stopped at a crater. Then we climbed the crater, as you'll see. This is the Blue Lagoon. And uh, the, the Kevlovic Airport, by the way, is right over here, frame of reference. Reykjavik's up there. There's the Kevlovic Airport. The Blue Lagoon, a very popular spa area. We, we could have stopped there. It was an option, uh, but we decided not to. It would have cost a little bit more money, but we're really not into spas, so we decided not to do that. So this is my first time in a helicopter, and I got um, my wife let me sit in the front seat so I could get some good pictures. And the thing about a helicopter, I mean, it's not taxiing per se. It just lifted, and now we're off. And um, that kind of felt odd for the first time because I'm only used to being in things that fly, that first taxi, <laughs> and this, there was no, no taxiing. And so uh, we're going out of Reykjavik at this point. Of course, my camera's inside the cockpit. So you'll see some window glare here and there. So not quite the same quality that you saw from their commercially made video. But that's Reykjavik from the air. And uh, we're still over Reykjavik. And now we're heading out, so we're uh, now we're well away from Reykjavik, and uh, that is, um, I think, the first crater we saw. We flew around this one. And then beyond that, we're heading toward the coast. But um, a lot more craters out there. And uh, this isn't yet the coast per se. This is a huge lake. That's just to show I'm in a helicopter. <laughs> And um, again, a lot of thermal ponds. But now we are heading toward the coast, you can see in the background. And uh, there's the coast. And there's cliffs, and the cliffs are just formed with layers and layers of volcanic lava. So it's like Iceland comes to a dead halt right there and then there's ocean you may have noticed in their video there was also a waterfall uh, we didn't fly right over that spot because um, I didn't see that waterfall and then turning around in the opposite direction now we're heading back inland Thermal energy is uh, basically the main energy source in Iceland. Very, very energy efficient. So we landed the helicopter at the base of this crater and then climbed to the top. It was pretty steep actually, but we made it. And then here's a view from the top of the crater. We're at the top and I'm just kind of panning along the landscape. And same thing, we're still at the top of the crater. It, it is raining at this point. And then we climbed down, which was more difficult than climbing up actually. Um, but we made it safely and there's, our, there's the helicopter that we were in and are about to go back into to head back to Reykjavik. And this is our guide, um, Trigvi is his name. That's the Blue Lagoon. 
And in the far distant background, you can see the ocean. And now we're heading back from the Blue Lagoon, back toward Reykjavik. This, uh, this was a particularly scenic stretch right here. With the, um, the ridge on one side, patches of green vegetation. in a desolate landscape. Uh, one of our guides told us actually that uh, NASA, I think it was Gummy, told us that, that uh, NASA has actually sent astronauts to, um, to Iceland just to do some training to get a sense of what it's like on the moon, for example. And I can certainly see why. And we came upon this lake, which I believe is in the middle of a crater. Two of them, actually. So again, the only way you would see this is with a helicopter. Two or buses don't get out to this area. Way off in the distance is Reykjavik. And now we're approaching Reykjavik. And there it is right over there. The weather had cleared up by the time we got back. Actually, it was never raining in Reykjavik. Uh, so, got some better films of Reykjavik than we did with some of the landscape, perhaps. And there's that hiking mountain in the background. Actually, I, I can't tell. I'm not sure if it's that one or that one. I'm pretty sure it's the one over on the right. You can see the, um, well you'll see it again, the airport is off to our right now, the Reykjavik airport. And I'm going to shoot through the window where Trigvi is sitting. And there's the airport down there. And I just let it roll while we come in for a landing. And again, we're not going to taxi, we're just going to be hovering. That's his uh, Garmin, by the way. It is a Garmin. <laughs> uh, I guess a special one for helicopters, perhaps. But uh, he's made this trip enough that I don't think he needs it. It was neat sitting where I was sitting because it, I was in the co-pilot's chair. So I could hear through my headset all of the, um, um, the communications with the various control towers, both at the Reykjavik airport and then when we got near Kevlovik airport. That, of course, it was all in, in, in Icelandic. I think I heard some English when we got to uh, Kevlovik Airport or in that general vicinity. Um, my wife in the back seat only heard uh, what Trigvi was saying, but um, I could hear both Trigvi and the control, control tower chatter, important chatter. And so here we are at Nordflug, Norderflug rather, 
two of their other helicopters. These are larger than the one that we had. The one we had will see five people. Probably four comfortably, but there's a, a middle seat. And uh, these will accommodate somewhat larger groups, not, not super huge. So just swinging around. And touchdown. That's what it's like being in a helicopter. So that night we ate at, um, I get the translation is Grill Market. So uh, in Icelandic it's Grill Market. God, Durin. It's the best I can do. Uh, again, it's partly underground. This was a pretty fancy restaurant. It was really, really nice. And um, wine is too expensive. So I, we, we just didn't have wine except for that initial sangria that my wife had. So I was just having IPAs, which are expensive enough, but uh, certainly nothing like wine. I really wanted this double IPA because I had a double IPA um, in the States and uh, really liked it, which was 10% alcohol. This one's 9% alcohol, which is still way up there. But IPAs have more alcohol than just beer. But uh, they were out of that one. So I had the same version that was a single, not a double IPA. It's from the same brewery. It's an India Pale Ale. This has 5.9% alcohol. And my wife had seafood soup. I can't stand seafood, so I had no seafood. And she had duck salad. These are actually two appetizers that she combined as her entree. I had a regular entree of grilled lamb. And everything there was delicious. As we head to our final day in Reykjavik, and we took a horse tour with a company called the Icelandic Horse. And that's what they look like. It's hard to tell from this um, one photograph, but Icelandic horses are about the size of American ponies. And we were warned by Gummy, don't ever say um, uh, Icelandic pony <laughs> because people will take offense. No, these are Icelandic horses. They're relatively small. And there's my horse, Grauna. Actually, I think the, the pronunciation of the, the woman who um, ran this place uh, when she paired me with my horse, said it was named Grauna. You have to add some, some trill to that initial part. Grauna, Grauna, like you're growling. That's Icelandic pronunciation. So my wife is in front of me here on Twister. That's her horse. And I'm right behind her on Grauna. And there I am in front. And my wife's in the middle. One of the other people on our tour, there were 10 people on the tour, is behind her. And uh, that's basically the people on our tour. And my wife is in front over there on Twister. Well, there I am back there on Grauna. And again, me in the middle there on Grauna. And my wife over there on Twister. So this was a lot of fun as we went through this trail. Then when we got back, the horses get turned loose into this large arena and they just have a wonderful time <laughs> rolling around that's uh, Bega B-E-G-G-A she is uh, the person who runs this tour it's a disease it's spread there's another one <laughs> the horse is in ecstasy. <laughs> yeah, look at the face. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it's cute, but I believe the real function is to maintain the integrity of their coat. Dust bathing is common in birds, and uh, there are some mammals that do it as well. So I think that, that that's what we're seeing the equivalent of here. I could be wrong, but I don't know much about horses, but I think that's what we're seeing. Oh, 
I said fur. Do horses have fur? Yeah. <laughs> they have something. <laughs> These were all very, very friendly horses. They're kept here for people to ride. They're so used to people. There's Bega. Well, our final night, we ate at the, if it's pronounced like this, Kajalarin Kitchen Bar, another quasi underground place. And it was really, really nice down there. And um, when I mentioned that, again, we were there for our anniversary, uh, our waitress brought us two complimentary glasses of champagne, which is really, really nice of her. I had these two IPAs, one was Icelandic, and one was uh, India IPA. And basically, you can see the color difference. I really like this one more uh, than, than the Einstock. It was, the Einstock didn't have as much flavor to it. And of course, bread. And my wife, no, that's me. I had grilled lamb. <laughs> I had lamb, of course, because I don't like seafood. There, I mean, there were things like whale on the menu. I, did, I don't, the thought of eating a whale just is not appetizing to me. My wife had skin, crispy skin salmon, 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 crispy skin salmon. Well, then the next morning, it was time to go home. We left our hotel at 5.30 in the morning, and um, we got on the fly bus, and then we ended up at the Kevlovic airport. We're inside the airport, and we took an Iceland air back to Boston from Kevlovic. And there's Logan Airport in Boston. And then once we got back to Connecticut, it was time to pick up my dog. Hello. Okay, so she was just about to enjoy a class. You guys wanted some rest? I don't, I don't want to go out again once we get home. All right. And that's Mike, who takes care of our dog with his dogs and other people's dogs keeps her in his house, so it's not a kennel. And here she comes, trotting over, trying to get through the pack of dogs much larger than she is, manages to do that. And out she comes. Hello. Yes, you're a good girl. Yes, you are. So I highly recommend Iceland. Uh, it's just a great experience. It's unlike any other kind of trip I've ever taken. Iceland is a must. <laughs>